All right, hey guys, I got a little bit of a different video. Yeah, I got a little bit of a different video for you guys today. This is I'm gonna be comparing the 3DS to the 3DS XL, not just screen size, but we're gonna go beyond that and just see what the differences are and see which one's better for you. I think this is the first Nintendo video of any kind I've done in quite a while, so it should be pretty interesting. So of course, the main selling point of the 3DS XL is well, it's bigger. I mean, look at the size of the screen. You can almost fit an entire 3DS inside of just the screen. Let's move this a little bit closer so you can see. You got like an extra like maybe inch and you can pretty much just fit it all the way inside. And the screen's actually taller than the original 3DS. So yeah. But with great size comes great stretching as nobody's ever said ever. But because both these screens actually have the same resolution which means that when I took this tiny little screen uh, I think it's like 3.5 inches, and took it to this up to this 5 point something inch screen. That means they have to take all the pixels and, pixels and stretch them. And now will that make the game look any worse? Well, that's what I've going to be showing you guys in a little bit. So the first thing we're going to do with the, with the, yeah, the first thing we're going to talk about is the design. It has a more clamshell design, which is more um, similar to the uh, what is it? The, the DS Lite. Let me see if I can find my DS Lite real quick. All right. So here's DS Lite, my DSi is somewhere that cannot be found. If you look at this, it looks like it may be closer to the DS Lite, but as you can see, the DS Lite has curved edges all around. This has kind of curved edges, but they're actually pretty sharp, like right here, boom. There's a line, there's one here. I have the extended battery, so it's a little bit softer, but it's not really that comfortable for me to hold, really. I mean, it's pretty comfortable, but it's just a little bit kind of square. It feels more square, I mean, look at this edge. You don't see that here. It's a lot. It feels a lot more rounded. I don't know if that's different or the same. But this is a lot more slim. Also on the sides. See the sides are curved more too. This is more square like. This is curved out. Just like I said with this DS. The DS Lite is fatter. But it's still curved out more. So also one pretty cool thing they added was. Um, if you've ever used the original 3DS or seen it. This 3D slider. Not much of a, uh, you can't really tell if it's on or off. If you try to turn it off, sometimes it'll be like um, a little bit on still, so you have to push it down. There's no real um, difference between on and off for feeling it. I mean, of course, there's a difference when you're looking at it, and you can push it all the way down, but there's no, like, um, feedback for when it's completely off. There's no click or anything. They fixed that with the 3DS XL. There's actually, like, a, a little bit of friction when you get to the end. So if you push it, you can easily push it down to the lowest setting without turning it off, and then you have to put, apply a tiny bit more force, and then, boom, it'll be off. I like this, which is one quick slide. It's hard to turn it down to the lowest setting without turning it off all the way. All right, so we'll get into a game so we can start showing the graphics while I keep talking about the um, rest of the stuff because it's probably going to have to take some time to load. All right. Let's just do all default stuff. It's kind of hard to show. You don't have a capture device or anything, so I can't really show you the screen very well. But... Let's go, let's go back to design while we wait for this to load. Like I said, it helped to load. One other cool feature is they actually move the um, Wi-Fi LED to the side. So you can actually see it from the front. Because in the original design, it's on the side. So you couldn't really tell if your 3D was active or if you are downloading... Not 3D, sorry. Wi-Fi was active or downloading anything. And it also made the switch a little bit bigger. So you have more rooms easy to grab with your finger. And the stylus placement has been moved to the side. Just like the original... Uh, sorry, the, the DS Lite as opposed to using the DS uh, Originals stylus in the back which you can't see, now you can't see it alright, as for picture quality, I don't think my camera will properly focus the light but as you can see, everything is very is pretty clearly visible um, you can see a little bit of the jaggedy lines on the um, character but other than that, it looks pretty nice drive looks pretty smooth and if you look at the graphics in the background they look pretty clear, pretty crisp Look in the distance, you can see it's a little bit, the things look small, but they don't look distorted or anything like that. And it's really hard for me to explain, let's just go like that, there you go, that's probably your best view of it. So as you can see, the stuff in the distance looks far away, but it doesn't look distorted or anything. So let's go ahead and grab that item box, and you can see the road actually has a texture on it, it's kind of blurry because it's a 3DS, but yeah, looks pretty nice. Now moving over to the big boy, the DS, sorry, I can't, I can't think today, the 3DS XL. Take a pretty good look at it. Um, you can't really tell, but if you look closely, the stuff in the distance looks a little bit pixelated. Uh, see if it happens if we get a little bit closer. But the look at this. 
just look at the characters themselves. It doesn't look stretched at all. It looks just really nice. It looks like you're just using a bigger TV. So, or like even a higher resolution. So, it looks just as sharp as it did on the small screen, but it's just a little bit bigger, so it's easier for you to see. So, um, that goes for that. The other main issue most people think about when it comes to size is um, the original DS games are actually running at a lower resolution. So, if you look carefully, even on the um, original. I can't remember any names today. The original 3DS, the screen is smaller and it's lower resolution on the DS. So that means when you step up to this, it stretches it, and that means that you'd have stretched pixels. So if you had stretched pixels on this, and I had to like blur them or whatever to make it not look as bad, it still does not look one for one like the original DS. And when you're taking the same DS games and putting them on a screen this big, you'd probably think, oh, that's not going to look very good. But let's go ahead and take a look. They actually have a mode on the... Oh, we can't quit. I didn't know that. Let's take a quick game. Yes. Alright, and then I'll show you what I'm talking about. <clears throat> okay, so for DS games, like I said before, the 3DS is a higher resolution, so it would not be able to it would not be able to display them one by one without there being black borders around it. So by default, it'll try to fill in at least the bottom screen. You have a little bit of black bars up here for your DS games, and it's not very noticeable. But if you're looking closely, especially in 3D games, you notice there is some um, the pixels do look a little bit distorted, even on this screen, which is not much bigger. So the thing you'd want to do on this uh, system, if you wanted to make it um, showing the original DS aspect ratio, so I think you press hold down select when you start up the game. I'll show you real quick just so I can show you an example of just how different the screen size is pixel wise. Takes a while for it to close. Alright, you hold down select and you press start on the game or select start A. And this is how big, pixel-wise, DS games were. So you would have quite a bit more pixels on pretty much all the sides of the top and the bottom screen with the 3DS versus the DS. So quite a big difference. So as you can see, it would already have to stretch it just to fill in these screens. So as you might be thinking, oh, it will look even worse on this big old screen here. Well, let's go ahead and take a look. From my testing, I didn't actually think it looked that bad, but I'll show you guys so you can see it firsthand. So you don't have to just just um, believe what I'm saying. We're gonna start at Mario Kart DS. I'm not pressing any buttons, so by default it will be in stretched mode. Alright, now so I can show you on both things side by side, we're going to start up a download play game. Alright, so while we're loading this up, I, this will give me some time to talk about the other features. Uh, as you can see, all the other buttons and stuff are exactly the same on both units. The 3DS circle pad and D-pad are spaced out a little bit because of the bigger screen but they're exactly the same size. It does look kind of minuscule <coughs> with the size of the original console though. I already talked about the 3D slider. The speakers have a few more holes so that's kind of nice. This one only had your typical five dot hole system. This has quite a few more. And as you can see here you have your it looks kind of stretched for 2D graphics but it's actually still quite visible. Let's go ahead and download the download play data. And one interesting thing about this is it has a very, very firm hinge. It makes a very loud clicking noise compared to other consoles. Let's just see, like this is closing versus this. So um, it looks like they have definitely improved the hinge here, so it should be quite a bit uh, stronger. Go ahead and cut this off. I forgot to do that last step. So you hopefully you won't have run into these types of situations where you have to tape up the hinge to make it actually stay on and then have worrying about wires coming out and stuff like that.
I probably should download played on all three so you can see what they look like side by side by side, but I didn't think of that. Alright. Now it is downloading. Let's see if there's anything else I'm going to talk about. Alright, so volume slider, that is also bigger on the 3DS XL, of course, it kind of goes without saying. L and R buttons, bigger on the 3DS, and I think actually easier to push. Take a look at this real quick while it's downloading. This L and R button, um, there's a little, I don't even know what to call this, there's an edge. So the button just sticks out and has kind of space around it. That makes it a little bit hard to press. Let's go to Versus. Well, on the 3DS XL, it's literally the entire shoulder of the device. There's no edge keeping it in, so basically you don't have to worry about missing it with your finger. You just easily just tap it, and then boom, you're done. And it has a nice feel to it. Well, this is more of a button thing. It feels more like a um, like a cheap keyboard, like one of the, US, the yeah yeah I guess the USB ones you get. It's a little bit squishy feeling. Well, this feels a lot more natural. It feels like you're actually pushing like a button on a GameCube controller where you know you get that instant responsiveness. While this just feels kind of squishy. The rest of the buttons feel fine over here and over here as well. So that's not a problem. But one really big thing I like about the 3DS XL is the um, start, select, and home buttons. On here, you have like microwave buttons. Like, what, what is this? You put you push it in, and it's, there's a button underneath, like the flat plastic, so you don't really get the same feel as you would with the um, actual physical button that you do right here. I mean, like this, it has a nice, firm feel to it. You push it in, and it, it just gives good feedback. All right, so visuals. Let's take a look. This is a DS game, stretched. So as you can see, there is some kind of... Um, doesn't look perfectly one-to-one -one like it would on the uh, DS. The foreground, is that the foreground or background? Anyway, the distance, a little bit pixelated, but still looks okay. So, I mean, this is perfectly playable. Does not look as, like again, it does not look as good as it would on the original DS. Because it's a tiny bit of stretching, but it's hardly noticeable at all. And now let's go ahead and take a look at this thing. And look, even though the screen's what is uh, 90 percent larger than the DS 3DS, sorry, and even larger than the original DS, it still actually looks pretty fine. I mean, there is some distortion in the foreground. It's not just pixely; it looks a little bit distorted. I don't know if you can see that very well. Yeah, just look at that. It looks a little bit not just pixely; it looks kind of blurry. So that is a little bit of a problem. But I mean, like when you're just racing. As long as you see the general idea of what's happening, you're fine. So, I mean, it gets, it gets a tiny bit blurry, but it's still very playable. Not as much for me, since I'm standing in front of a camera, but... I mean, so let's just look at these visuals, so... Looks perfectly fine. And the best actual test of this would be using a Game Boy Advance game, but as this can't play Game Boy Advance games, I wasn't part of the program for that. I have something I can show you. Hold on. Battle Network 5, one of the few Game Boy Advance games to actually be ported to the DS. Well, you'll full actually see how the stretching looks when you're looking at a 2D game, because there's not 3D graphics that are constantly being adjusted and stuff. It's just 2D. And it was originally a Game Boy Advance game, so we'll see how this looks. And then we'll call it a day. We're already almost 15 minutes in. But one other thing is the screen. Both these screens are actually on the same brightness. Let's just take a look at them side by side. Same brightness, power save turned off. Wait for this thing to load. Turn off the... The other problem with this thing is, um, sometimes I'll just bump it and the 3D will just turn on a little bit. It'll look weird, especially if you have it at a weird angle. So it's nice that they added a little bit of resistance to this one. That makes it a little bit harder to accidentally bump and turn on. Like, look at this. I'm moving my finger all over it and it's not even turning on. You actually have to want to turn it on. Well, with this, if I do the same thing, all you have to do is just tap it and it turns on the 3D. But like I was trying to say before, I was trying to explain the screens. Try to get this card to read. This card's always had a little bit of a problem. There we go. But let's just look at these menus side by side. Like this one. Definitely feel like it has a little bit more glare, anti-glare screen on it, because I was actually reading and I said it 
the screen is better for um, protecting against glare and stuff. Uh, preventing glare, I guess, would be the right word. But as you can see, it seems to take it a lot easier than this one. This one just completely wipes out when you, you get a glare across it. This one is still pretty visible, but glare is a little bit noticeable. Um, also, this screen feels a little bit brighter than the other one. I don't know if it's just me, but it looks to shine through a lot, and the colors actually look a little bit better, too. Like, if you look at this one, it definitely feels a lot more blue. Let's just take a good close look. Get the camera to focus. Like, there's a lot, it feels like there's a lot more blue mixed into that colors. The camera won't actually focus, but you can kind of see what I mean. Then look at this. It feels like it has more gray into it, so it actually feels like this is what it's actually supposed to look like. Even though these are in the exact same menu. So, for colors, I definitely think they did a better job on this. And now this will be the final test. Touchscreen and stuff automatic still works. I mean, there's nothing really to compare there. And these buttons, oh my goodness, the start button just feels so much better to be able to push something in. and still feel like I'm typing in something on microwave. Microphone, pretty much the same placement over here. Power button, they made it a circle. And... Go ahead and load this game up. Is there anything else I forgot to mention? Uh, SD card has been moved over here. I know, hold on. I know, hold on. Alright. SD card is moved over here, so just pull this open and you can get to the SD card. As opposed to being over here. I don't really know why they changed that. Headphone, no longer in the middle. Pretty nice. Now so it's a GBA game that's been ported to the DS and now being played on the 3DS. If we get the camera to focus. Alright, as you can see, this is pretty much one-to-one -one exactly what it looked like on the original GBA, so even though it's stretched to, like, unbearable levels, 90% of over, yeah, 90% over the original 3DS, and then you add in that it's also on the 3DS XL, so that means it has a higher resolution, it's stretching it, basically it's stretching the pixels, and it's also stretching the resolution, so pretty much has everything that could be negative going for it and it still actually looks really nice so if you're wondering how your th DS games will look on the 3DS this is how they look even at its worst so I would definitely say this is worth getting basically if this is kinda big it may not fit in your pocket or whatever but if you have bigger hands like me this is definitely a lot more comfortable than this tiny little thing um, disadvantage you can't get cheap external batteries the only external battery for this is like ninety dollars so, you have to, there's a few things you have to take into account, basically, like I said, like that. You can't get external batteries cheaply. Uh, it's quite a bit bigger, so it may not fit in your pockets as well. It's a little bit more expensive, so that's another thing you have to think about. But overall, I really like the changes. The power light, visible from the front. Wi-Fi light, visible from the front. It's just like, they did a really good job redesigning this. So, yeah, I mean, that's all I can really say. Um, I love the new L and R buttons. There's just so much I like about the 3DS XL more than just the screen size. So that's the main thing I want to make this video about, but turned into a 20 minute rant about screen stretching and me messing up 3DS, DS, XL. But you can't really blame me. I mean, look, they all have like, the same name. So, <laughs> anyway, that's basically just what I wanted to say. Um, hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I hope it helped you decide between a 3DS and a 3DS XL. I definitely think this is a better option if you can fit it in your pocket. And if you don't mind spending a little extra, I think this is more comfortable, and I think it actually looks a lot better. The last thing I'm going to actually show you, I, I lied, that wasn't the last thing. The one thing that just completely made this the number one option that I would definitely recommend is when I first started up Zelda on it. Like, you've seen Zelda before, like, oh yeah, Ocarina of Time, yeah, woohoo! Yeah, but seeing Ocarina of Time with the HD textures on this screen was just, just amazing, so I'm going to leave you with that. Uh, if you have any questions about this or the other versions, I have all pretty much all the DS's. I don't have them all still working, but I've used every single DS in existence. The, I even have a DSi, just not a DSi XL. Post a comment in the, in the comment section and just ask me what you want, and I'll try to answer them. So, until then, I guess I'll see you guys later. Bye.